Our precious Earth has been shaped through many centuries by various geographical forces giving rise to various land masses abounding in its range of flora and fauna. One such place was formed by the tectonic collision of the Indian Plate and the Myanmar Burmese Plate, known to us as the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands, also a Union Territory of India, is an archipelago of 836 islands, of which only 37 are inhabited by humans. Being 730 nautical miles away from the eastern coast of the Indian subcontinent, the islands are home to around 14,000 phenomenal species of living organisms. Scattered along a stretch of more than 800 kilometers, the islands are known for their immensely rich biodiversity. More than 80% of the landmass is covered with forests, ranging from the dense tropical evergreen forests to semi-evergreen, to the moist, deciduous forests. Limited human interferences have ensured that the majority of the archipelago is still a haven for multitudes of rare and endemic species of flora and fauna, which are found nowhere else on this planet. the rich biodiversity of these emerald green islands naturally arouses a profound interest and curiosity amongst people across various walks of life. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands, being isolated from contiguous landmass, has resulted in distinct life forms. The islands are home to 110 endemic species and subspecies of birds, like the Narcondum hornbill, Andaman teal, and Nicobar megapode, to name a few. Apart from this, these islands host migratory birds of two flyways, the East Asian Australasian flyway and the Central Asian flyway. Are unique amongst all bird-rich areas in India, These islands act as a stopover and breeding site for hundreds of migratory birds. The BirdLife International has recognised 19 important bird areas in the islands due to its conservation significance. Mangroves form one of the most important features of these islands, with around 61,600 hectares of the area on the islands being covered by them. With 35 true mangrove species distributed luxuriantly across both Andaman and Nicobar, these islands, having about one fifth of India's total mangrove cover, stands out as one of the most diversely rich areas in India. They form a protective encasement around the islands and stand as a barrier against the furies of the surrounding waters. Mangroves come up in the brackish fringes of the nutrient-rich mudflats. They get periodically submerged and exposed during tidal influx and recess respectively. Adaptations like the pneumatophores, stilt roots, Viviperi help these unique plants to survive the rigours of the coastal environment. Like high salinity, soft sediment and low oxygen levels around the roots. Mangroves particularly develop 
in areas that are mostly covered by brackish water, especially during the high tides and around mudflats along the tidal streams. Mangroves have a complex system for salt filtration and a composite network of roots to counter the salt water immersion and strong wave action. The areas where the mangroves thrive are clearly not one of the most habitable kinds. Most other plant species don't survive in such areas. Hence, these ecosystems are an asset to the environment and play a major role in preventing erosion along the coastal areas and protecting the biodiversity of the region. The reproductive cycle of mangroves is very unique. Unlike most other plants, mangroves, surviving a highly stressful environment, produce propagules that remain attached to the mother plant till it is old enough to send in roots right after their detachment from the mother plants. The propagules may stay attached to the parent plants for 12 to 14 months. The unique phenomenon is called vivipary and is a way of ensuring that the mangroves thrive and procreate with success. The tidal influx ensures that the propagules are carried over distances before they strike root in the soft, muddy substratum, thereby helping the parent plant in the dispersal of its progeny. Living in two worlds at once, mangrove acts as a nutrient sink and protect offshore ecosystems. The entangled root masses of mangroves dissipate the wave energy and guard the coastal lines as a biological shield. The Ramsar Convention has conservatively pegged the worth of each hectare of mangrove to be of 15,161 US dollars. Indeed, the mangroves form one of the most important and productive wetland ecosystems, as it is one of the best breeding grounds for fish and are truly the lifeline of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. When in 2004, the tsunami hit the coasts of these islands, it resulted in an ecological imbalance in the mangrove ecosystems. The geological upheavals brought about by the catastrophe led to land submergence around the coasts and created many inland waterways, which resulted in many new water bodies and saltwater creeks in the southern group of islands. On the other hand, land mass got uplifted in the northern group of islands exposing the submerged mangrove habitats, resulting in large-scale drying up of the mangrove patches. This change in the land altitudes drastically altered the lives of the species thriving in these ecosystems. However, the inland habitations were mainly safeguarded by these mangroves that bore the brunt of the fateful event. The lighthouse at Indira Point, the southernmost tip of the Great Nicobar Islands, is one of a good example. Which was on high ground before the earthquake is now underwater, indicating land subsidence of about three to four metres. The mangrove inhabited wetlands are home to various bizarre creatures such as the mudskippers. The mudskippers are very well suited to dwell both in and out of water. When the tide is low, these primitive species of fish use their pectoral fins to walk on land and sift through the sediment for food.
They are uniquely adapted to survive tidal extremes and can absorb oxygen through their skin and the lining of their mouth. When the tide floods back in, the mud skippers breathe through their gills underwater. The extensive mud flats all around the islands serve as apt nesting grounds for a wide range of species of aquatic as well as land-dwelling animals. Another unique creature, dwelling nearby the mangroves and the beaches, is the colourful fiddler crab. From a distance, it appears to have a single claw. However, on closer observation, one gets to see the marvellous adaptation of the fiddler crab in having one huge claw. They use their single, large, oversized claw not only as a response to predation, but also to battle off other fiddler crabs over territories as well as females. Fiddler crabs thrive in the coastal regions in big numbers. They mostly feed on detritus around their burrows. These crabs have an excellent peripheral vision and hide in response to the slightest stimulus. During the time between high tides and low tides, they make the most of their time on dry land. Another species of crab, commonly known as the blue soldier crab, are quick in their appearances as well as disappearances. They emerge from the wet sand in tightly packed groups resembling an army of aliens and scour the land for algae. These mimic the troops of tiny tankers while they hover over the land, filtering out small food particles. When the water floods back in, they delve under the sand as quickly as they had emerged. The saltwater crocodile, the largest of all crocodiles in the world, is the apex predator of Andaman and Nicobar coasts. The islands, being blessed with numerous creeks and lush green mangroves, are one of the last safe habitats for the endangered ones. These prehistoric giants across the world are declining in population due to habitat destruction and poaching. The geographical change, which happened due to the tsunami, has disturbed their prime land and forced them to move across the islands in search of suitable habitat for existence. Presently, 350 individual adults are estimated to be thriving in and around these islands. Yet another flagship species here in these islands are the sea turtles the sea turtles are species of reptiles that have practically existed since prehistoric times and form an important component of the marine ecosystems. There are seven known species of sea turtles in the world. Five, namely, the olive ridley, the hawksbill, the green sea, the loggerheads and the leatherbacks are known to be present in the seas of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Except for the loggerheads, the other four species return year after year to these islands in search of nesting grounds. In India, the leatherback turtles are known to nest only in the beaches of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The sea turtles, guided by their geomagnetic abilities, navigate using the Earth's magnetic field to reach the beaches year after year for nesting on the grounds where they had been hatched. Sea turtles have magnetite, a magnetic mineral in their brains, which work as a compass. 
aligning them with the Earth's magnetic poles. Baby sea turtles naturally get imprinted with this unique magnetic signature on the beaches where they hatch. These imprinted maps guide them to navigate their way back to the same location several years later to lay their eggs. Male sea turtles never set their foot on land once they enter the ocean, unlike the females. Olive Ridley turtles are the smallest and the most abundant of all the species of sea turtles found around the world. They grow up to two feet in length and around 20 kilograms in weight. The Olive Ridleys have been named so because of their olive-coloured carapace, which is heart-shaped and rounded in the centre. They spend their entire lives in the ocean and travel thousands of kilometres between feeding and nesting grounds. Once every year, they come together as a group, usually in really large numbers for laying eggs. This phenomenon is called the Arabada. Kurtberth Bay, in the middle Andamans, hosts one such Arabada each year. The leatherbacks, on the other hand, are the world's largest turtles. They can grow up to about six feet in length and weigh around 900 kilograms. As is evident by the name itself, the leatherbacks have shells composed of a layer of tough and rubbery skin, which is thin, but is strengthened by tiny bone plates, giving an appearance of leather. This species of turtle are huge and need sandy beaches with a steep descent into the water. This provides them with the ease of swimming and keeps them from getting treacherously dragged into shallow depths in the pitch dark nights. The shell has seven ridges running along from front to back. In adults, the dorsal surface is dark grey to black with numerous white blotches and spots. Interestingly, leatherback turtles have been studied using satellite tagging and found to have travelled from these islands all the way to Madagascar on one side and to the western coast of Australia on the other. Jellyfish, which are majorly composed of water and are a poor source of nutrients, form one of the most important parts of these gentle giants' diet, making it indeed remarkable as to how such massive leatherback turtles surviving on a meagre diet such as this can travel several thousands of kilometres All turtles laboriously dig deep burrows with their hind flippers for laying their eggs. The number of eggs per clutch varies from species to species, with the Olive Ridley laying about 90 to 140 eggs per clutch, and the leatherback turtles laying 40 to 120 eggs per clutch. After laying eggs, they carefully cover them with surrounding sand before heading straight back to the ocean to hopefully return the next year to nest again.
Most turtles nest during the night till dawn, return to the seas before daylight. The eggs of the sea turtle begin to hatch after a period of about 45 to 65 days. Swarms of baby sea turtles crawl out of their nests to make their maiden trek towards the ocean. Most of the hatchlings perish even before reaching the ocean, mainly because they are preyed upon primarily by crabs, wild pigs, monitor lizards, birds and stray dogs near habitation areas. Once into the seas, the little hatchlings are predated upon by fish, crocodiles and seawater birds. According to the statistics, only one in every thousand hatchlings survives and is successful in reaching adulthood. This fact makes it necessary to conserve these beautiful creatures for our own posterity. Temperature plays a pivotal role in the life of sea turtles. The ambient temperatures of a sea turtle's nest determines the sex of the hatchlings. Warmer temperatures ensure the emergence of more female hatchlings than males. Nowadays, global warming has disturbed the usual pattern in the lives of marine animals. Unusually warm temperatures caused by the climate changes are disrupting normal sex ratios, resulting in fewer male baby turtles. Warmer sea surface temperatures are also leading to a gradual loss of foraging zones. On the other hand, Frequent storms and the rising sea level are posing a threat to the nesting grounds of these turtles. Due to these reasons, some species of sea turtles are dwindling in numbers and thus are declared vulnerable. This calls for extensive conservation programs and awareness among people so that the rapidly declining numbers of these marvelous creatures could be revived through our collective effort. Oceans are the largest and the most essential part of the Earth's ecosystem. They are the largest carbon dioxide sinks. They contribute immensely to the rich biodiversity of the planet. Out of all the extant marine communities of plants and animals, coral reefs are the most biologically productive. A single reef is known to support as hundreds of organisms. The sea around the Andaman and Nicobar Islands has about 13,700 square kilometres of the area under coral reefs. The east coast of the islands has fringing reefs, while the west coast consists of a long barrier reef of around 320 kilometres in length. Coral reefs are often referred to as tropical rainforests of the ocean and are home to more than 25% of the entire planet's marine life. Astonishingly, they account for 1% of the Earth's total marine environment.
Reefs are particularly found at depths where sunlight is able to reach, as there exists a symbiotic relationship between corals and zooxanthella algae. There is a strong mutual dependency between the reef building corals and the reef inhabiting organisms. The numerous species of fish and other organisms which inhabit the reefs find food and shelter, reproduce and rear their young ones in the reefs. The fish and reef dwelling organisms keep a check on algal growth on the corals. Ensuring the coral reproductive success and mitigating coral diseases. The symbiotic relationship between the corals and the organisms dwelling in the reefs maintain a special equilibrium in the environment. For instance, large sized parrotfish bite and scrape off most of the algae from the surface of the corals. Their digestive systems grind up the inedible calcium carbonate from the coral skeleton and defecate it as sand. This process produces hundreds of pounds of white sand each year, and this is one of the reasons how sand keeps on accumulating on the ocean floor and beaches. Another type of organisms, classified as sea anemones, are also important for the coral reef communities. Some of the species of sea anemones are vibrantly coloured. They are boneless, predatory creatures of the sea and are mostly related to jellyfish and corals. There are more than a thousand species of sea anemones found on the planet. A unique partnership exists between the sea anemones and a species of fish known as the anemone fish, or more commonly as the clownfish, is found in close association with it. The clownfish depends on the sea anemones for habitat and in turn provide them protection against polyp-eating fish, gastropods, starfish and sea turtles. In the absence of clownfish, the sea anemones often become unhealthy. The oceans are endowed with countless life forms that play a crucial role in maintaining biological diversity and ecological balance. More than 50% of the oxygen in the air is produced in the oceans. They function as carbon sinks, breaking down carbon at a rate which is more than 50 times greater than that of the atmosphere. The ocean currents help regulate our climate and weather patterns. Oceans provide us with numerous essentials, of which food and medicine are the prime commodities. Despite being a boon for the human population, the oceans are getting threatened by various human activities. It is estimated that 58% of the world's coral reef communities are decaying because of global warming. In line with the national policy, the Department of Environment and Forests of Andaman and Nicobar Administration is duty bound to lessen the negative environmental impact caused by human activities as well as natural phenomenon. Thinking globally and acting locally, various measures are taken, like protecting the turtle nesting grounds, restoration of mangroves destroyed by natural calamities, monitoring and restoration of coral reefs through scientific interventions, strengthening vigil against poachers involving multiple enforcement agencies, awareness and sensitization drives for community participation in conservation. To maintain life-supporting systems and essential ecological processes, it is imperative to sustainably utilize what nature has to give. Life has existed on Earth for more than 3.5 billion years. And for the first time in Earth's history, unmindful activities of a single species, Homo sapiens, have resulted in pushing many other species towards extinction, which eventually could jeopardize its very own existence on this planet. Mother Earth, 
is bountiful. It matters how we can serve her. Our responsible behavior in this intricate system shall ensure the sustenance of our own kind.